welcome to the All Metal Mode Podcast with your host, Michael Hare. Tune in every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern with co-host Gypsy Jules, and every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern with Matt Hoffman as we talk to guests, discuss metal detectors, equipment, and everything treasure-related. Feel free to join in the discussion in the chat room during the show, and please, if you like what you hear, we'd appreciate you taking a moment to hit that like button and share the link with your friends. We hope you enjoy the show. The All Metal Mode Podcast starts right now. Hey everybody, this is Mike here and you're listening to the All Metal Mode Podcast. Um, Thanks for joining us, Matt. Matt Hoffman will not be joining tonight. He is traveling to New Jersey. Uh, He's got really spotty cell phone service, so we just uh, decided uh, it's going to be me and George tonight. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, George posted in All Metal Mode that he was having, he was getting ready for the show and he, uh, posted a bottle of jack and uh i thought "Ah, i'll have a few drinks tonight and really you know relax with a few drinks and i'll be honest with you i'm a lightweight because it's hitting me pretty good and uh so if i slur or mess up a lot uh, i'm gonna go ahead and blame it on the jack and uh george i'm gonna blame that on george so um (laughs) yeah his fault it doesn't help that our first person in is earl from virginia and he said morning (laughs) <laughs> come on Earl it's evening it's it's uh eight o'clock oh goodness so 2019 Watts rendezvous three-day golden treasure hunt June 21st 22nd and 23rd in Mancos Colorado Friday they're going to be doing gold prospecting they're actually going out to a river with a dredge and other equipment bring your uh your uh panning supplies and you get to keep what you find. Saturday, 10 a.m., they're giving away gold coins. Uh, they're, they're doing a hunt where they're burying um, tokens, and they're giving away gold and gold coins. That's pretty amazing. Um, $1,000 minimum cash and prizes in one of the tokens. Sunday, Sunday the 4th, they're doing a door hunt, and I love this idea. I, I talked to um, Wayne earlier today about it. Uh, He's just brilliant at coming up with great, great ideas. What they're doing is he's got going to have four little doors and he's going to have prizes behind him and he's burying a bunch of keys. And you find a key, you run up and see if it opens up one of the doors. If it opens up, you get one of the prizes. If it doesn't, go back to detecting and um, find a key. Um, the the Where they're at, it's going to be, um, you can camp, it's $40 a night, but that includes... Uh, three meals a day, or if you want a bunkhouse, it's $45 a night per person. Um, $215 is the, the to do all the hunts, and the cutoff is April 1st to get that deal. You can, you can even come in at the last minute and pay for each hunt or whatever, but I would highly recommend getting in um, before April 1st and uh, – I've heard great things about the Watts hunts and um, um, Wayne. If you can make it, I think it'd be a heck of a good time. You got to try it out. Uh, another thing, I talked to Wayne tonight or today, um, Nugget Brain Wayne, and he's got a, a brand new in the box to Soro Lobo uh, Super Track. If anybody, he's trying to sell it. If anybody's interested, reach out to, to Wayne. Tonight's guest is George Kinsey, and we're going to be talking about the XPORX. Um, he's had it for a while, loves it, I believe. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll find out. I mean, well, I don't know if he loves it, but I know he's been finding some really good stuff with it. So uh, we'll have to find out. How you doing, George? I'm good, Mike. How you all doing? I am good. I Other than you, you're a bad influence, and I got a, a little bit more... Uh, I got a few more drinks in me than, than I was hoping for. Well, don't say relic detector, <laughs> relic detector, relic detector, right. relic detector. <laughs> <Right. laughs> we'll get everybody right there with us, won't we? 
Yeah, Absolutely. the show will end at eight eight oh seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mm, I'm going to skip out for now. I, I've still got a half a drink here, and uh, I'm going to sip yeah. on it as we do the show, so I don't uh, know. So I, I've been seeing you post a, a finds with the ORX, um, and, you know, you're like our uh, go-to metal detector guru, so I felt like it was time we do a show, and I, I know you got some time on it now. What's your overall experience with it? Well, I really like it a lot. It's very simple to operate. It's got the key features that you would find on a regular dais. It's not a little brother. It's not an entry-level machine at $900. It's kind of its own little enjoyable metal detector to use. Uh, we talk about some, some of the key features. You use your high-frequency coil selections. Mm-hmm. And you have 21 frequencies ranging anywhere from 13 to 81 kilohertz. It's extremely sensitive to small targets with high frequencies 50 and 81. It's got four factory programs, two gold prospecting, two coin and relic, and two you can, you can make for yourself. Just can't name it a funny name. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's XP wireless technology. The coil remote, which I have, the M6 pinpointer, it all pairs up, which is really convenient. Uh, the headphones are new. They're behind the ear. You cannot use a, a an XP Deus WS4 or WS5 headphone. You're either okay. going to have to use the supplied ones. If you just buy the machine, you can buy that little clip adapter where you can remove the uh, headphone and, and plug in the little adapter, then use any phone, you, you know, any earphone you'd like. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's a nice, nice feature. Get, when I, when I first yeah, heard about the, the ORX, I was a little disappointed that, to, that the headphones weren't compatible and stuff, but I love that they made it to where you can pull that off and you can, you compare it to whatever yeah. headphones you want. That's a brilliant idea. I love that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I like it. Uh, as far as coils go, you cannot use any of your Deus uh, low-frequency coils, no, the original ones, but you can use the X35 coils. They're compatible. I don't have an X35 coil. I'm going to get an 11-inch X35 coil because I have the 9-inch and the elliptical coils now, and I like it the 11-inch. I like hunting with an 11-inch coil. Uh, the lightest machine on the market, uh, if you take the set mount, if you remove the, the uh, controller and put it, just measure and weigh the uh, machine, it's 770 grams. I mean, you swing this thing, you don't even know you have a detector in your hand. My Thracian, which is very lightweight, feels heavy now that I've been swinging this Oryx. I call it Oryx. Yeah, what is its real name? <laughs> is it a Deuce? Is it a Deus? Is it an Oryx? Is it an Oryx? Who the hell um, knows? I just know it looks really good. We had Gary uh, Blackwell. I, we had Gary Blackwell on the UK show, and it's an Oryx. But I believe some people are calling it, calling it the Oryx. Um, so, but I think they're going with Oryx. All right, I call it the Oryx. <laughs> yeah, so hey. we'll go with the Oryx. <laughs> Everybody knows what you're saying, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's always funny about them. Uh, it uses lithium batteries, which will last you about 20 hours. Nice. Uh, it's got a five-year warranty. Now, they're working on a GoTrain mobile app, supposed to be coming this year, where you can, on your cell phone, there'll be an app, and it'll, I think it'll give you GPS coordinates on where you're making your finds. Hmm. Uh, so that's coming up. And, you know, one thing about these these XP detectors, you never know what the update's going to bring you. That's the surprise. When I, when I had the first dais that came out, I think it was version 1.3, whatever, when I used it the last time, it was at 5.2, and it was a whole different machine. Right. I mean, they had added a lot of, a lot of different features. Uh, so who knows what will happen with the future with this, but... Right now, it's, it's got enough features to keep you happy. The settings, they have 99 levels of sensitivity. Right now, you have 20, 21 frequencies 
using the both of the coils from 13 kilohertz to 81 kilohertz. Mm. You have 99 levels of discrimination. If you're using the gold program, which is less filtered, which gives you a little more depth, you have five levels of IAR discrimination, which means you'll be able to knock out some of your smaller gold, uh, some of your iron targets. You have 20 levels of threshold, and you have that important four levels of reactivity when you get in, in with the iron. Now, here's what I like. You have an iron tone with pitch audio. You can turn it on or off, not to be confused with iron volume. What's cool about having the tone on is, I run my disc at 50, and I'll explain why later, and you can still hear the iron. Hmm. You'll, hear, you'll hear an audio pitch for the iron, very faint, but you'll always know the iron's around, but you'll be discriminating out targets up to 50 on the meter. Nice. Uh, if you go down to the green, you got a manual adjustment for ground bounce or an automatic. Uh, you have a salt mode if you hold in the hashtag for a few seconds, you'll be able to ground balance it on wet salt. It's from uh-huh. 0 to 25. Haven't been to the beach yet, but we'll go down. And like I said, four factory and two user programs. Target ID, which I love. It, it'll give you a big number you can see and not bad eyes. Uh-huh. And it also tells you the probability if it's iron or not. you got a pinpoint button, which I find sometimes for me with big paws. <laughs> it's kind of hard, you know, same way with the dais. It's kind of hard for me to get my, especially with a glove on. Right. It's really hard for you to hit those buttons, and it kind of frustrates me a little bit. But I tell you what, I, I love this machine, and I've got some coins and and buttons now. I don't know how long the XP probe is, but the probe was co- covered up in the hole when I finally got down to the wow. target. Now I want to I want to back up a little bit here, George, and and I apologize if I'm in if I'm incorrect here. I thought on one of our shows you weren't a big fan of the dais simply because it didn't handle your ground condition, your soil conditions real well. I, I, am I remembering that right, or am I completely off? No, I think you remember the call pepper area. Okay. I live about, I'm 40 miles south of Culpeper. And okay. where I'm at, we have, the red, we have the red clay, but it's, you know, this machine also has a, 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 a bar that displays, you know, your ground mineral on it. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm, where I'm at, it, it's anywhere from around four bars and the ground bounce, the actual ground bounce is at around 90 which is pretty high, but uh-huh. it's not call pepper. It's not call pepper. So in the ground I'm in around here, it works fine. Okay. So, you know, you in central Virginia, I can go over across the street and I may not be able to get a good ground balance. But this one here, uh, what's kind of cool about it, let me, uh, I'm going to turn on my light here. I'm just going to turn this on without the, uh, without the volume. And okay. looking at the screen, you have a they, they have a preset ground balance already here. When you're in the coin programs, they set it automatically at 88. It's almost like uh, taking some ferrite, you know, and balancing the coil to it. Mm-hmm. And when you're in the gold, it has a, a preset ground balance of 87. But when you actually hit the pinpoint button, you bob the coil up and then hit the button again. It'll give you your ground reading. And it should match your, you know, it should match what they've set up uh, on the machine already. And then you have a ground level of mineralization that it will display in bars. So uh, this one, everywhere I've taken it so far, has worked fine. But I dare not, like I told you, venture to call pepper unless I'm carrying a, a ground balance and pulse detector. Right. Nothing really, nothing really works good in and no. cold pepper. I mean, that's not anything mm-hmm. against XP or anything. Just you, you oh, pretty no. much have to have PI detector. Now, okay, what there was? Am I mistaken, or was there something you didn't like about the the dais? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I thought we had talked. And I mean, because you you weren't regularly using the dais anymore, correct? Correct. Well, 
what 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 I what I didn't like is too many buttons to push. You know, okay. you have to okay. push a lot of different buttons to get a lot of different information. You know, you have to push a button to to change your your frequencies. You have to push buttons, 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 buttons. You have to push. The Oryx is simple. There's very few things that's set up, and, and it's very easy to use. And that's what I didn't like about the Dais. I mean, I just got tired of, of pushing buttons. Now it's good. You can compare different frequencies to the target. I mean, you can do a lot of different things with the day. So it's certainly one of the best detectors on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. But this one gives you some of the better features in a simplified version with the performance you need. Okay. And it, 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 you know, it will tell you you have three tones when you're in the you're in the uh, coin program, the deep coin and the you have two coin programs. When you're running those, you have three tones, but you actually have five tones. So okay. if you have a three-tone metal detector, tell me where I'm coming up with five tones, actually. What do you think? I'll put you on the spot. I'm, I would <laughs> guess one of them would have to be iron, some kind of something to do with the iron. That's uh, one tone, the low tone of iron. Is that one of the three tones, or is that a separate tone from the three? Yeah, the iron is one of the three tones, and your middle conductors is the second tone, a mid-tone. And your higher conductors, you know, your silver and copper and all that, is a high tone. But there's also two more tones. What are they? Well, George, you, you shouldn't have got me drinking alcohol if you're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, right. I, I don't know. You you've, you stumped me. When Tell the me. target's... I you know I don't I don't always look at a meter I listen. Yeah. When the yeah. targets are deep with this machine, I mean, and they are deep, you'll get a mixed tone of high okay. medium or medium low. Okay. I call that the other two tones you'll hear, and those are usually the deeper ones. And when I hear that high medium, you know, you kind of jumps between the two. Right. And then I check the depth and know it's deep. Chances are that may be a good high conductor. Okay. I if gotcha. you get if you get it's like a two tone machine. If you get low and mid tone, you know pretty much it's going to be a low conductor. And this thing locks on deep. I mean, I it, it really reads numbers very high. My buttons were coming in in the eighties. A pool tab. I dug a couple. They were shallow. I just dug them anyhow. They came in in the seventies. But all my coins, even the little ones, come in in like 88, 92, 95. And nice. I dug a Maker's Head large scent, which was the first coin I dug with it. And it was down the full length of a probe. And it read the whole time in the 90s. And I said, well, how in the hell did I miss this thing? You know, mm. I swung over it. And it's got the best modulation. It's a sweet, very mellow high tone. Nice. And, you know, it's it really is a, a very, very well thought of detector. Now, if you're the kind of guy that's got to have everything, you know, and you don't need, you've got to have it all, you need the dais. Mm -hmm. But if you like simplicity with all the features you'll ever need to go out and have an enjoyable day <laughs> detecting in a very, in a very lightweight package, you're, you're going to love this ORX. Right. Now, <laughs> I, I assume it's as durable as the, you know, when I, when I first started hearing about the dais, I, I thought it would be a flexible, flimsy. I, I was really surprised to find out how durable the dais is. Um, is, is it still durable? Oh, sure. It looks like just like the, I mean, the, everything looks the same, but it cuts some weight out of the, uh, the rod, you know, it's one piece. To get mm -hmm. the weight down, and they cut it out. But yeah, it's all one piece. It's nice. It's really, really good, and the uh, the high frequency coils work the same as they do on the other days. Uh, yeah. But yes, yeah, uh, actually, you know, I'm a tall man, and I can since it's so light, I can take it all the way out and get it to be just about the right length for me. So I don't nice. have to hunch over when I use it, That's and it good. locks right in. Yeah. Nice. Now is oh, okay. Yeah. You you like you like it over the dais for the fact that it's 
it doesn't, you don't have to push a bu- bunch of buttons and stuff. Is there anything else you've noticed that you prefer uh, the OR- ORX over the Deus? Well, you know, for me, it's lighter than the Deus. Yeah. Although yeah. the Deus certainly isn't heavy. Um, the headphones are not for everybody. Uh, you know, they're the ultra lightweight behind the ear phones, uh, which, you know, you can't use, like I said, the, the Deus phones with it. But mm. they have great uh, great sound quality, and, you know, you can hear the tones really well with it. Uh, my ears have got cold the other day. <laughs> you know, it's got cold weather, and because, you know, they don't really cover your ears, they go back behind your, right. your ear, ear over. But uh, I, uh, crystal clear tones, good volume. I don't see how anybody, uh, especially someone starting out who wants to get into XP detectors, wouldn't find this one very easy to use. And the gold modes go deeper because they're less filtered, you know. Mm-hmm. They're pretty raw filtered machines. And, you know, they got a big number that jumps out on you. It will ID the, and, you know, the number of the target and then tell you the probability of it being iron. So it's got a couple of little cool features, and the screen's plenty big. I can see it, and the light stays on. Uh, so uh, simple to use. You know, it's not a stripped-down dais like the dais light that okay. people were paying eight hundred dollars for. Uh, you know, without the um, the actual meter, mm-hmm. uh, this has a meter, and and uh, it's got plenty of features that you want. Mm-hmm. I like it. You know, I I like a lot of detectors, but uh, I really like this one. Yeah, that I think that's saying a lot. You know, I I I think we we all have our own opinions and what you like, I might not like, and vice versa. But I, I probably not probably I trust your opinion more than anybody else I've ever talked to because I know you've put years in and you've used not you know where me. I know I've I've used probably I'm probably pushing forty detectors or so, and you've used hundreds. Um, so you, when you talk, I listen. Um, you know, and that doesn't mean that that uh, that, that there still couldn't be a, a situation where there's something you love that I don't, and vice versa. But I do trust your opinion more than anybody else. So when you start posted finds. And you seemed excited about the ORX. My ears really perked, and I knew we had to get you on to talk about it. And uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about it. You know, and and something I I was wondering how it would do. You know, the the 800, the Equinox. I mean, that everybody that seems to be the talk of everything. And after it was released, you know, XP announces this. And I've been very surprised, but also happy for XP that I've seen, I've been seeing a lot of ORX talk. And I have not heard anything but good where the 800, even people that I've talked to that love the 800, there's things about it they don't like. And there's been some issues and, you know, you and I have talked about some of those on the show and stuff. And, uh, so I, I mean, I think this ORX is just going to grow. I do. I think as many people that are using it and talking so highly about it, it's, it's definitely on the right path. And, um, that's good. Yeah. I want to tell you something I found very interesting about, I went on a couple of the, the XP people that sell XP. And I think maybe it's changed, but the, the big the big site, the XP Americas, they don't push this detector. I I saw I, maybe it's changed, but the last time I looked, there was no mention of it. Are they you talking about the, the team, the uh, USA team? No, 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 not that, not those folks. I mean, they're doing their own thing. Okay, I'm talking about yeah. the people that sell them. Oh, oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And, you know, everybody wants the uh, dais, and I think this one, some people might think it's just an afterthought, 
but truthfully, it's an amazing little piece of machinery. And how they do it at XP is beyond me. They are the most innovative company, I believe. And I've always believed that since the day it first came out. You know, I, I, told, I told a lot of folks when I got the first one how good they were going to be. And everybody laughed and joked, oh, that's a toy. You know, what the hell? Now everybody and their mother has to have the thing. Right, and right. So how do, well, how do selling detectors there are, but... This little oryx is, is no slouch. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't doubt it because, like I said, all I'm hearing and seeing is good things. You know, it's funny that yeah. you mentioned that. Um, <laughs> when the dais came out, you know, I was a deal. I had my own dealership at the time, selling metal detectors, and I at that time. It was nothing for one, two, three emails a week on this new machine from Bulgaria and Russia and, you know, all these uh, European countries. And, and it got to where I didn't even look anymore. A lot of them were very fancy looking, but when you started reading about them, you know, it's to me it seemed like old technology stuffed into high-tech looking equipment and that's the best way to explain it and and i remember the xp coming out and you know they're from france and i just i didn't take it serious george i did not take it serious at all um but one after another after another you know using that detector and and just kicking butt with it and the fines and i mean i'll be i'll be the first one to admit you know i don't like I don't consider myself closed minded. Um, I love to learn new technology, but I'll I'll be real honest with you. XP, it took me a while to really understand what, what they were all about and, and absolutely believe in them. And, uh, but I think you're right. They are just, they're on a a real good path and, you know, we'll see what's next. I I, having, um, Gary on the show, uh, there's definitely some more coming. And I, I think when you're talking about innovative, uh, I'm really excited to see what's what's coming down the line. Um, a question I have. Now, I know this might be a hard question for you because you've been doing it since 69, which I said earlier, 70, and when I posted yeah, it. Yeah, it's not always uh, man. You cut me off a year. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Also, uh, also, you said, I think you're getting forgetful. You said... When you had a guest on recently, he was the first relic hunter you thought you ever had on. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. It was on one of your recent podcasts. And who the hell's been relic hunting longer than me? Uh, Moses? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, George. I don't recall. Yeah, I, it's not that. I, I hope it's not that I'm getting old. It's that I have a, a one year old son that. Uh, yeah. is a little demon. Uh, I love him to death, but boy, that, that boy, uh, he, he gives me a rough way to go, George. He's adorable, though. Um, well, I got a one-year-old granddaughter that's here every weekend, and she's running <laughs> all through the day. Like, oh, so I know how that is. Right. They're fun, though. It's worth yeah. it. Um, okay. uh, this question might be hard because you've, you've been at it so long. But is it easy to use? And I mean, could you recommend it to to somebody new in the hobby? Oh, sure, I would. Okay. I mean, I'm going to take a friend of mine out who's relatively new. He's been finding some really great stuff, and you know, he he's looking for. You know, he's not sure how coils work and things. And we're going to meet this weekend on one of his sites. We sent a lot of nice Confederate buttons and early coins. And I'm going to bring a whole plethora of detectors with the electrical <laughs> coils out there. And I'm going to show them the advantage of having the way that elliptical coil, you know, you get more coverage with an elliptical coil, but you have that narrow field. Yeah. And these are not, this is an iron-infested place. So I'm going to show them some of the advantages of using elliptical coils on five mm-hmm. different machines. I, so. I, I'm one who absolutely – you're talking about – um. Um, concentric coils when you're talking elliptical, correct? That's the same the same terminology. Well, no, these are double D's. Oh, double these D's. Are, yeah, 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 yeah. Concentrics are usually the round ones. 
but uh, these are double D's, and they have that narrow down the middle like a slice and a pie. Okay, yeah, double D. I prefer concentrics in heaven. You'll get more ground coverage out of them, but you'll have, yeah, you'll get more ground coverage because they're long, Mm -hmm. but they've got a narrow field where you can kind of get in the iron a little better. And uh, I'm going to show him demonstrate that at his site. Okay, so, hold on. We got we got to get off the subject here just a little. Our our ORX okay. subject. So you you think a double D works better in the iron? I think an elliptical double D works better in the iron. That's that's my thought. The shape of the coil with the sensitivity being right down the length, the middle of the coil okay. all the way. Okay. That's what I think. And that's why every detector I own has, if it's ones available, I only use elliptical coils. Uh, okay. Occasionally, I put the little round one on, but you, they're usually the concentric coils. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, they're great, they're great discriminators, but the only reason you'll find something in, in the iron with those is they're just smaller coils, like four inch or five or six inch coils. I see. I've always, when, when I'm rally cunning and heavy iron, I've personally always felt like I did did better with concentric coils, like even an eight inch. Yeah. I mean, I never got into the great big, you know, concentrics. I, I over an eight inch, I'm not interested. But eight and you know the mm-hmm. hockey puck size, I've I've had really yeah. good luck over the years. But um, well, that's the cone. I mean, it's less covering less ground. It's mm-hmm. a cone shape that goes in the ground. So, you know, I teach his own, but right, right. I, I, go, I go another route. I just go elliptical on all my machines. My uh, impact, my, uh, what's that, cruiser. Uh, I don't have one for the uh, the new Amphibio yet, but I have one on my AKA, my Serration, all my favorites. Have ellipticals. Nice. And that's nice. what I use when I got hit this iron patch. Huh. Huh. Just I don't know. To just out another button. Yeah. I. I. Uh, you found some great things with the ORX already, haven't you? Well, not much. I haven't really been out for many hours, but I posted a button on your. Yeah. All metal site. Do you know what that button is? No, what is it? That is I, maybe, a, maybe that I is, know, but I, I've seen, I've, you know, with the kid, I forget so much, and I don't. Uh, please tell me. Well, do you have people on listening right now? Well, yeah, we got or some. Listening. Do they know what it is? Did any of them see it? You just—it's the button you posted. Was it today or yesterday? I posted it this evening today. Yeah, let me go back and look. It's a star, seven-point star, Cherokee Nation button. It's an okay, 1830 that's... button. Yeah. Wow, no, that's not the one I was even looking at. I seen the one that you... Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Wow. So tell me a little bit about that button. Well, people will look at that button and say, that's a cool flat button you found. Well, let me tell you what it is. It's a Star Cherokee button, Cherokee Nation button from the 1830s. The Cherokees hung out with the Confederate Army. They sided with the Confederate Army, and I dug that button 10 feet from where I dug a Virginia coat button. Ooh, how cool is that? It's- yeah, that button is, is, you don't find many of them, but that's the history of it. The Indians chose Confederate size, and, and they are found mostly in a, a Civil War camp, mostly in Confederate camps. Now, the Confederates moved through this area, and this is an 1820s house. That's an 1830s button. I can't correlate a Cherokee Indian visiting Virginia and going to a very wealthy person's house. Mm. I can correlate that to a Civil War soldier's uniform from the Cherokee Nation who was with the Lee's Army. Wow. So there's, there's some interest in it. It's on a line field. 
I haven't cleaned it. I don't know if it's got any gilt on it, but uh, that's uh, the history of that one. Wow! Uh, How I didn't know that, George. That's amazing. I, I see. I see it now. I'm looking at it now. It's on all metal mode. If if anybody wants to go mm-hmm. see it, um, now off the subject again a little bit. You you kind of have a fascination with buttons, don't you? Well, I've been digging buttons my whole life. I've dug over 700 Confederate buttons. Wow. And I don't know how many million buttons. There's very few I haven't found. The one I covet the most is a George Washington inaugural button. You know, I just can't seem to find that button. It's my Achilles heel. Mm-hmm. My friends who I used to hunt with found them. I've been on digs where they've been found. I just can't. <laughs> run my coil over it. I, I run them over the biggest dandy buttons you've ever seen. Jars full of these giant flat buttons, hoping one would be a GW. But, you know, I haven't, I haven't you know, it's all in the luck, I guess. Yo, oh, absolutely. Draw. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I may find one in my life. I may never. But it's like anything else. You know, yeah. I found gold coins. I found Civil War ID tags. And a lot of people will never find those. So right. I think you get what you get. You just get what you get when you go out. That's all. Absolutely. But I keep looking. It keeps me going. That that button, that's a pretty looking button, too. I would I would never consider that a flat button. I mean, you definitely clearly see the, the lines and the star and everything. That's, uh, that is impressive. Yeah. yeah, that's listed in Harry Ridgway's, uh, uh, he was the dean of, of Civil War Relics in Virginia, Ridgeway, and, and he's listed that on his site. Uh, I found one other one, a different pattern in my life, but that's the first one of that pattern I've ever found. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, incredible. I, you know, I have a real, um, I've got a real fascination with buttons. I think buttons are one of my probably my favorite thing even even old flat buttons i still get excited i I really enjoy buttons i i don't know why buttons i don't know what it is but i i really you and i definitely connect on that um you know the buttons thing i don't know what it is but i love finding them um yeah they call me the button digger in virginia (laughs) yeah yeah you are How many buttons do you think uh, you've, you could you even give any kind of estimate uh, on how many buttons? Thousands? No. Probably? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely in the thousands. No. Uh, you, can, you know, you can get on a good colonial site and dig a couple of hundred flat buttons in no time. Yeah. But Civil War, you know, Civil War buttons, the Confederate especially, have done really well. But that goes back to, you know, it goes back many years of really hard hunting in good areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the bu- the button gives you that perfect sound, that nice little round sound that I know damn well I got a butt. <laughs> yeah, you can you can really hear them, and uh, that's I've always enjoyed seeing them come out of the ground. Yeah, you never same. know what's on them. Right, yeah. you never know. It's it's who knows. Um. You know, when I was in Ohio, I found some eagle buttons from where they'd bring them home, but nothing too special. Yeah. But you know, you find them with designs on them and everything else, and and it's 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 a, a really, I don't know, I just love finding them. Um, I know we got off track a little bit. A, a question I had for you. Uh, um, you know, when they announced the price because it's still a pricey detector um you know i that's another thing i I wondered how it would do you know because it seems like the trend is that that six to eight hundred dollar range i would say it's really seems to be the trend lately and not that nine hundred dollars is is out of the question by any means or maybe still in the same price range but uh, how do you think it ranks with other detectors in that price range? Uh, you know, I think it's right about there. I mean, if you buy a new XP Dash, you're going to pay fifteen hundred dollars and up. Mm-hmm. So that's probably right around half of what it would cost you to buy a Dash. It comes mm-hmm. with a a, a four hundred dollar coil, 
Right. I mean, the high frequency coils are four hundred dollars, so you're actually getting the remote and everything else for about four ninety, or four, you know, a little less than four hundred. If you were to buy an XD Deus remote by itself, you'd probably lay out six hundred. Right. Uh, so I think uh, I think it's really good value. Uh, I mean, it's it's just it's it's an XP. It's it's this wireless amazing technology. The only thing, if you got big paws, you're going to have problems if you wear gloves well, pushing those little buttons. But that's just one of the things you have to understand. Right. It has nothing to do with performance. It has something to do with the fact that they're all the same. You know, I mean, George, I, the buttons you can try to get to. I don't know if, if you're like this, but I can overlook a lot of issues with the detector if it's not performance. You know, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you're ever going to build a detector that'll suit everybody. You know, it's just can't be done. So I, I'm pretty good at overlooking, uh, the, you know, certain design qualities that I might not like if the, you know, if, it, if the performance is there. So. I think for you, as many detectors if you, that you've used and everything, and that's your biggest issue, I think that speaks volumes. So let me ask you this. Let's say you ha- I have 600 to $800 to spend on a detector. Um, mm-hmm. Would you tell me it's, it's worth uh, saving up a little bit to, to go out of my price range? I would think so, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I found nothing at all other than the fact that, you know, sometimes it's hard to push the button. Right. Other than that, everything ran smooth. And it had the depth. People think doesn't think it's gonna have the depth. What are you talking about? And mm-hmm. the, one of the gold uh, one of the coin programs is deep. Uh, you know, one of the the gold programs, uh you have fine gold and regular gold, it's unfiltered, it's deep. Uh, you know, you're gonna how deep you gotta go. Right. You know, right. And, and and you know, when you're a senior like I am, uh, you know, sorry about it, I am. That weight is a big factor, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and and having something that light that can perform the way it does is, is a bonus. You know, yeah. you big oxes, go ahead and use your amphibios. I've got one. Lean it up against the wall, lonely like the other ones. And the only right. reason it's leaning is it's too heavy for my arm. You is know, it a I'm... beast? Is it beast? Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But it's it's too heavy. I can't I can't swing it. Yeah, no, I'm with All you. Done. I'm I'm getting there, um, George. I'm getting there quick. I matter of fact, I was out this evening. Um, uh, I got home, got ready for the show, and and here we are. But so I was out until this evening metal detecting, and I was with a heavier detector, and I was just in taller grass. I and I'm not tall grass. Just it, it wasn't manicured real well. And I noticed just like after a half an hour swinging and then I, I was, I wanted to get out of it and swing in the nice low grass because it was just starting to wear me out. And, you know, 20 years ago, I would have laughed at you and made fun of you, but, um, no, not really. I'm kidding, but I wouldn't have understood that, that comment, you know, how important a, a lightweight detector is, but I'll tell you what, it's really, it's really starting to catch up on me. And the longer you swing, it seems like the, the harder it gets, um, to now, swing those heavy do detectors. You your, do you use your arm strap? Or you just lay your 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 arm in, in the uh just lay your arm it, on the armrest? It depends. Uh um I, I hate I hate I hate an arm strap. So if I can well, get away without it, I don't use it. Well that's why you have a problem in grass or thigh or stubble. You know, it, it's going the torque that it's created. If you don't have your arm in it, you don't have to tighten it down, but it helps with torquing just by simply sticking your damn arm in the armrest. Yeah, and then it won't get the strap. Out as much. I hate yeah. a strap. It drives me crazy. Um, I, and I, I totally get what you're saying, but I, I really struggle with that. I, I've only had a few detectors that they they were balanced so uh, so that you had to use one, and, and then I would use them and. But I, I was never a big fan of that. Um, yeah, but but still, I mean, you know, there's still something to be said about weight. I mean, if 
If you're swinging four pounds in tall grass without an arm strap versus a pound and a half or two pounds, it's noticeable. You know, that's noticeable. Yeah, but you, yeah, you still, I still like to do it though. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll it'll hit those stalks pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that I would I would ask is, what will have the better resale value? I mean, if you were to buy an ORX for that price, or if you're going to buy a, oh, let's say a Nocto or a Macro, which one do you think is going to sell first? Well. I think without a doubt the ORX, but that's because XP is well established in this country. And uh, but I think you'll see. I, I you already see it. I'm already seeing it with the Amphibio. Um, I'm seeing more and more talk about the Amphibio. I seen more and more, definitely more talk over the the with the cruiser versus like the racer and stuff. I think they just they're they're working on getting known and well established and i think we'll see a time where the the resale value on those detectors come up comparably to to other what they should be don't i mean don't yeah. you well i don't know you know they're not there yet i mean what's interesting to me is everybody praises that group from turkey you know they listen they they really care but nobody will, will, if you go to try to sell that detector, nobody wants to buy it. It's, uh, I mean, if you've used it and tried to sell it, it's a hard sell. You know, when, when you look at used detectors, you know, it seems like the American-made detectors are the ones everybody still wants to buy. Well, Even that's though, because they've been household names for 20, 30 yeah. years. Um, that's right. You know, I, I think... In in my opinion, I think, um, you know, I think Nocta Macro is right up there with XP on uh, their technology. I think they're one. I think they're definitely one of the most innovative con- uh, companies out there, manufacturers. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I think. I think well, Nocta. They have, the they have regular technology. They have innovative programs they've put in there. They mm. put in their machines. Their programs are what makes them. It's, yeah, it's VLX it's, technology. Well, yes, absolutely. But so you know, we, yeah. we all we also know that. I, I mean, they. I think to me, I see them as one of the hardest working companies out there. I mean, they, they're listening to. They're, they're wanting feedback. They're listening to their feedback. You know. Um, they announced this multi, multi, simultaneous multiple frequency while it's still in the works and wanted people's input to what they wanted in it. What other company has done that? Reached no, out to no, the I'm masses. Saying, I'm not saying that they, they don't care and they don't make a good product. It's just the masses haven't caught on. No, the, yeah, the masses in the United States have not. You are correct. Uh, they Absolutely. have not caught on yet, but it's, if you, I, I feel like I've seen with each release more and more interest and more and more talk with them. And, and I think, uh, you know, what I've been telling people is, is give it a year, give it two years and watch, watch where they're at. Cause I, you know, I, what a year and a half ago, I'm going to say a year and a half, maybe a little bit longer is the first time I heard a knock to macro. And I thought, what's this, what's this impact they're talking about? What's this racer? You know, what's this racer too? I, I, I was, um, you know, and, and now, you know, I'm having conversations with people who know them and, you know, are using them and stuff. And I'm seeing more and more in social media and stuff, but, uh, I mean, please understand to the listeners and stuff, I'm not trying trying to take away from XP. I mean, you know, XP is tried and true and has built their name with, you know, people using them that know them and and just doing really good. Um, Just, uh, George, you got me drinking tonight. You're you're a bad influence. That's all I can say. Relic relic detector, relic detector, relic detector. (laughs) I'm done. I finished mine. I'm all good. Um, so one of the other things I wanted to ask you, um, and I'm sorry, we kind of debated that, but I agree with you right now. I mean, right now in this moment, um, you're, you're definitely, I don't think you could go wrong with an ORX. You're right. You're going to be able to, to, 
you know, it's going to hold its value as good as anything out there, if not better. Absolutely. Um, I, this one's kind of putting you on the spot. If you don't want to talk about it, it's fine or whatever. I know you've used the Equinox 800. Um, yeah, I have can, it. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Not an Equinox 600. Don't buy that. Really? Please, I don't care who you are. If you're going to buy an Equinox, get the one with the extra features. Okay. Like the gold, the gold programs. That okay. makes that detector a completely different animal. Really? And I have one. I have one with all the coils. I have one with the, the pinpointer. And it's sitting up against the wall right next to the amphibio. Okay. Hmm. Well, you know what? The last time we talked, you were not super impressed with the Equinox. So let's let's get you scheduled in to do one on Equinox as well. I'd like that. But can do you mind comparing the? I mean, the eight hundred is by far the most popular, most talked about detector right now. Um, there's no just there. I don't even think that's up for debate. Um, everybody is has or wants an eight hundred. Can you compare the eight hundred to the to the Equinox for or the? The the eight hundred to the ORX force. There's no you can't compare them. They're different different technologies. Well, you know, I could tell you if I like one better than the other. If one did something differently, I know. I mean, the eight hundred is not hard to set up, but you know, you have multiple function buttons. You know, one button does two things, and a lot of folks don't like that. They find that difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you got to push a button and you, and then you push another button and it's doing something else. And and I think that's one of its weaknesses. And, and the biggest weakness for me is why I still use a the uh, Sovereign Elite was when you go to the saltwater beach. And, and like I said before, it loves bottle caps. Mm-hmm. Now, how in the hell if a BBS mine lab can get rid of them by sound? How does a, a, a multiple, you know, oh, this this new one, this, this multiple, now I've been drinking too much. Uh, <laughs> you, say it to me. Multiple something, whatever. Um, uh, simultaneous can, multiple frequency. There you go. I forgot about <laughs> simultaneous. Uh, that sucker loves bottle caps. You know, I like bottle caps, too, when I'm taking them off a beer right, bottle. Right. <laughs> but I certainly don't like them under the coil. That's, I guess relic hunting, I don't encounter them very often. Right. But uh, I don't get that. I, I can't figure that one out. That's a mystery to me. Mm. But, no, people, that's the number one detector out there. That's all anybody ever talks about. Right. The Deus and the Equinox with the Noctis coming in, you know, coming in third. So I think it's, you know, it's MindLab XP and Knock the Macro, and those are the ones that are all the buzz about in the world today. Okay. You say you can't, it's, I understand different technology and stuff, but the Equinox 800 versus the ORX, are you willing to say, or, or can you say? Well, it does more. I mean, they are, they. They are in the same price range, so I think they should be somewhat com- be able to be compared to one another, but simply because of their price range. I, I completely understand and agree different technology. Or am I putting well, you on the you spot? More, you get more features with the... Uh, you, you obviously get more settings and more features. And what do you got? Six, six different programs with the uh, 800 where you've got... Uh, Four only on the uh, or uh, ORX, so there's more. There's more in in the package with the 800, but I I didn't find myself finding anything. And one of the things I you know I hate is digging tiny targets, mm-hmm. and I still hate the compressed the compressed TDI mm-hmm. or TID. I'm thinking of the TDI now uh, or, TID v- or VDI. A visual display yeah. icon, with, yeah. But with the, you know, with the Oryx, I can tune out, set the disc at 50 and never take any crap. Right. Can't do that with, can't do that with any 
any one of the equinoxes because, you know, any number could be a number of different things, and you're still going to have to dig it all. And, and I can tell you, I hate digging it all because I don't want to dig and waste my time. Mm. Got arthritis in my fingers. Who wants to dig up, <laughs> dig up right. crap all day? When right. I can set this over to 50 and dig, enjoy digging real targets. So, George. piece of the so George, if if I have an ORX in my hand and an eight hundred in the other, without be you're, you you're saying both of them are great detectors, and I say you can pick one, George. Which one are you going to pick? Oh, I'm grabbing the ORX. Okay, okay. That's me. That's me only because yeah. it does some simple things that are important to me. Right. And one of them is is the fact that I can I I know when. I can get rid of the things I don't want to dig and not miss anything at depth that mm. I do want to dig. I trust that that uh, that ID meter, and it it gets it goes down and identifies targets pretty deep. So if I've got to look at a meter, although I really don't like to, mm-hmm. it's got a lot of useful information. And and when you hit a target, I mean, the meter changes and gives you a nice big number. And you can decide to look at the number and listen to the tone, and uh, it's that simple. Now, something I find with a lot of a lot of detectors uh, seem to kind of get away from, or or I have maybe it's me. I I know I don't have the best hearing. Um, On the ORX, can you tell the depth through your tone? Yeah, got great modulation. Good. That's it, you, a, you definitely can tell the depth with this sucker. I mean, nice. you know, and I, listen, I hear that good, sweet, high tone, man. And, and then you get a lock on, which surprises the heck out of you. Then you do the pinpoint, and you know it's deep. Okay. And you go down, and you know, you're eight, nine, ten inches down, and you still aren't there yet. <laughs> uh, good enough for me. Mm-hmm. Now, have, have you noticed any... Uh, can can you do any comparisons between the 800 and the ORX on depth wise? Have you seen one that you think? Have you noticed that one seems deeper or better at depth? Or and depth isn't always everything. I know that. Well, to most people, it seems running machines at the highest possible sensitivity and depth means everything. Where I never do. I run my ORX at seventy sensitivity. Okay. Okay. And that gives me a nice, it still gives me all the depth I want and gives me a, I can hear the clear tone. I don't okay. like all the jibber jabber. You cause your own problems when you run sensitivity up into the 90s, which you can if you want. Right. I, I don't ever do that with any machine. No, uh, me, you, you, know, you and I agree then because I'm the same way. I, I don't, I think if you, if you have to run a detector unstable to get incredible depth it's not a detector for me i don't want i don't think you you need to listen i mean if you feel like you got to listen to all that chatter and noise to get the depth it's it that that detector is not for me you should be able to run it stable and and get it to do what you want to do yeah so far so good good yeah so far so good it's it's not a lot to talk about it's just easy to use and you know watch those uh you know i think xp has a skill school that gary does mm-hmm. uh just let's go to xp orx and 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 you can hear hear the sounds and you know you can understand a little bit more about it i mean i think he does a good job with the way he you know he goes through the settings and tells you how things work yeah. i mean it's, it's something you could look at before you would buy one i would think mm-hmm Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, now I got to figure out how to get rid of all this other stuff, except my beloved Thracian. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about. You said it has two gold uh, gold programs and two coin and relic mm-hmm. programs. Can you? Well, why two coin, each? What's eight coin programs? Yeah, Say, you have two. You have. Uh, you're going to have a, a coin deep and coin fast. Oh, okay. You use coin fast, obviously, when you're in the iron. Coin deep is, you know, it, it is what it says it is. Right, and right. And when, you when, when you're running your gold programs, 
you know, you have the uh, just gold, basic gold, and then fine gold, that's smaller pieces. Or, and, you know, you can use the, the uh, machine and gold programs to hunt relics. And yeah, you get absolutely. A little more depth because of the fact that it's not filtered yeah. at all. What what programs have you been run? What what have you been running and uh, looking? Because you, I, I know you're a big time relic hunter. Have you done anything besides relic hunting with it? Well, I find old coins when I relic hunt. So I know I don't go to the park and coin shoot. Okay, okay. Or go to the sandbox and all that crap. No, I find more old coins relic hunting than I ever did as a coin shooter back in the day when there was lots of old coins. Mm-hmm. And you're probably I, I in. Like I'm sorry. Go ahead. I yeah. cut you off. I just, I'm not the Mercury Dime guy. Right. Right. Um. So you're you pretty pr- uh bu- bu- you pretty much been rally hunting with it, and and I'm assuming in heavy iron. Am I correct? All my sites are heavy iron. Okay. So what what's what setting? What's your go to settings? And is there any modifications? Well, you can take a, you can take like. Well, uh, let me just go real quick. So if you go to, I don't go, coin fast is good if you know your targets are shallow. And, you know, I run it at 14 kilohertz pretty much. Uh, reactivity, you know, which allows you to get in and close to, to the iron and react to it. I usually run that right at, at uh, 3. I run my disc at, at 50, and I run my sensitivity around between 70 and 80. That eliminates a lot of the ground mineral I hear. The, the thing ground balances out some areas 84, and my worst area ground balanced at 90 uh, when you actually do a ground balance. But the machine's set up already uh, pretty much at 88 when you're turning on these coin programs, and it's 87 when you're running gold. They've already figured that average in so all you're doing is you're comparing the their average to what your ground actually is. Mm. So it's uh, it's very interesting the way that it works. What I like is you know I, I lose pin pointers all the time. Well, what, the, what, what do you mean you lose pin pointers? Well, Christ, when they were black, I let, I leave them all over the state. <laughs> you know? And uh, I was one of the first people to say. Hey, when are you going to make an orange point but pinpointer? And everybody will have that me. Oh, you silly. No, no. Uh-uh. You lose pinpointers. But this mm. one, if you go to, if you if you put your pinpointer down at your last hole and you go into your uh, an options thing mm. and you pull a pinpointer and do research, the damn thing starts beeping and you can hear it beeping and you can go over and find it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is, yeah, that's way cool. I got a few funny uh, off the top, off topic, but I gotta, I gotta say, I got a couple funny pinpointer stories. My first one is I was heading out metal detecting. I got my very first ever pinpointer. Well, a good pinpointer was the the Garrett Pro pointer, that first one that came, that was out. The U, UPS guy pulled up as I was loading up my equipment in the truck. I grabbed my pen pointer, took it out, put it put it on my side, and went out metal detecting. And I I I dug a hole. It, I hadn't been out in a while because we'd had so much rain; everything was flooded and it was a mess. And so, what I did, excuse me, what I did was what, what was what was happening. I dig a hole, and it, it was so wet that it would instantly fill fill up. Well, I just dug a hole. I just pin, pinpointed my target and got it out, and I got a call. Well, I stood up to take it, um, and I come back after the call. I, I flipped my plug back over. I was I was out where an old house had once been. The driveway was still there. The house was gone. It was uh, kind of taller grass and stuff, and uh, I, I, I go in and I I get my next my next uh, hole and my next target and I dig it and I flip it over and I go to grab my pinpointer. My pinpointer's gone. I, the brand new George. 
and I'm looking all over for my pen pointer. I can't find it. I can't find it. I'm stressed out. And then all of a sudden it hit me. Did I kick that in my last hole when I stood up? Um, I go over there. I pull it. I pull the plug back and there's my pen pointer completely submerged in water. That was probably 10 years ago and that pen pointer still works and had been submerged. So I have been very lucky. I also lost it in a field, out field hunting, a farm field where a house once was. And I didn't know, it, it was my first time there. And I, so I was kind of wandering. I knew the general area where it was. And I ended up losing it. And I spent a few hours walking that field. And luckily, I found it. So that's that's my pinpointer stories right there. Well, now you shouldn't have to lose them. They're all different colors. You can get a pink one if you need one. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I've got a uh, yeah. Garrett Garrett uh, carrot now, and uh, I still have my old one. I still, I've kind of retired it. It's it, you know, it's it's deserved it. It's lasted roughly ten years or however long, and I figure it deserves a little break. But I still pull it out now and then. I love that pen, pinpoint. I love the first one. Always worked good for uh, me and stuff. Yeah, I always use my hand. Do you? <laughs> Pinpoint is something I've never really cared for. Mm. It's more equipment to carry around and lose. Well, but this one is all, you know, it's all paired up, man. It, yeah. When you turn it on, it turns the coil off and, nice. and, and it, and you'll see the pinpoint function. And, uh, it's, it's really very, very neat, nifty the way they did this. And you actually hear the uh, tones through it, don't you? Oh yeah. You can even adjust the tones. There's yeah, all kinds of things you can do with it. That's amazing. Yeah. I've only heard good things about that and just absolutely good yeah. things. Um, George, I think we've covered everything you've, I feel like you've really, really touched base on everything. And, and, uh, we, we, we kind of hit everything. I, I, you did amazing. Um, and I've really enjoyed doing this. I, I feel like I know the, the ORX, even though I haven't even held one yet. Um, absolutely great. Well, anybody who, who tries one. Go to your local dealer, like always, uh, if they carry that brand, and, and, and get a demo with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you'll see it's not a toy. It's not an afterthought. It stands on its own merits, and it's got the features you'll need to be successful. Mm. It's not, you know, you don't, you don't have the hudograph, and you don't have a number of other things, but you really and truly don't need it. Uh, it it'll do the job. Uh, I've got both the coils, the elliptical and the round. Uh, you know, I used the elliptical one day and found the found some buttons, and I used the round nine. Found that matron had a large scent with it, and that was that was way down in the ground. I mean, both those targets were down as far as that probe goes. Wow! So, is it safe to say you you know we we know you've been detecting since '69. You use you've used a couple hundred machines. Has has the ORX impressed you more than once? Yeah, it has because it, at the stage I am in my life, it, it meets all the criteria. I mean, I know how machines work, but this right. one's very easy to use. Uh, simply use it's very lightweight. Everything's paired up nicely. I mean, you can you know you can just turn on the damn probe, and all of a sudden it goes to work for you. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably. You know, I always liked the desk because it's cool. Uh, but this one here is something I could grab every day, and, you know, unless I'm going to Culpepper and I'm taking a pulse anyhow when I go there. Uh, right. It's something I could use every day, whether I'd be relic hunting or coin hunting. And that's what's interesting. What machine has two gold programs and two coin and relic programs? Right. And, and I, th- I feel like a lot of times when it says coin and relic, the relic side yeah. of it is more... They, they, a lot of a lot of the coin and relic detectors or coin and relic programs are way really mean coin programs to yeah, me. That's so, what it is. Yeah. so the fact that you're using it to successfully relic hunt, it wasn't just an afterthought, or it's not just a a title yeah. thrown on to to coin shooting. Um, 
it, it must really be getting the job done. So very impressive, George. I, you know, it, it sounds like to me, everything you're telling me, it's just, it's a workhorse. It's, it's not as fancy as like the dais, but it's just, it, it's simple. It gets the job done. Yep. It's got the right amount of power. It's got the right reactivity adjustment. I mean, it's, it's, it really does do some interesting things on its own merit. And it's very lightweight. Uh, it, it, you'd be amazed at how lightweight it is. And it doesn't feel cheap. Right. It's light. Yeah. And that's... It, you know, you can, you can adjust it. You get the X35 coil, and then you'll have from 21 frequencies, and then you'll have 30, you know, X35 frequencies. And this one you can also, you know, you can go down to 13 or up to 81 uh, kilohertz when you're using it. And, mm-hmm. I mean, how many, how many more frequencies do you need? Right. What, what are you using mm-hmm. relic hunting? What, what, where are you at when you're relic hunting? Uh, what do I, where do I have it? 14. 14. Now, what I found out, though, I had the elliptical on and was running 14 Sunday when I dug that Cherokee button. And I went over by their uh, private power, and I got EMI at 14 with the elliptical. And then I kicked it up to 31, I think it was, and it went away right away. Oh, that's so at least nice. it told me where that power line was. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, but 31 knocked the EMI flat. You wouldn't even know it was there. Oh, that's so the nice. So the frequency could help with that. Yeah, and changing that did, got, got rid of that mm-hmm. shallow power. That's Stable. impressive. Very impressive. Okay, George, I don't have any other questions. Is there anything you want to add to it before we before we call it a night? No, I think we're good. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I'll talk to you more. I've got some machines I want to send you, so we'll communicate about that later. Yeah, and we'll probably time. have another we'll figure out another contest to have. And right. Nobody wants to be one of George's <laughs> detectives. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I I got to tell you, I had some messages over that where people were like, is he for real giving it away, giving away a detector? Yeah. And I went and looked and I said, I think he is. I mean, it sounds like he's not joking, yeah. but nobody hit you know, it. I have, I have a dresser here. You know what I was going to do? What's that? Pick the drawer. And there'd be a can of spam in one drawer. <laughs> uh, there might be a, a pinpoint in another there may be some baked beans in a drawer, <laughs> and then there may be a really nice metal detector. And, you know, you'd have to pick the drawer if you won the contest and you got what you got. <laughs> that sounds like a blast, yeah. George. i gotta, I got to figure a creative way out of, since I can't hide them anymore, get rid of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is your wife on you about them? Because I'm up to, like right now, I've no. got... 10 and she's like eh, you're taking up all the closet space and um, yeah. oh uh, yeah but now she she understands that this is a it's a passion and affliction at the same time i guess right but i i promised i wouldn't get any more except a few items <laughs> um, but, uh, you know uh, I, I am going to make an attempt to uh, stop hoarding and sell some give some away uh, you know, I don't have many years in the field left, so I can't use them. Why? Why let them sit there? Yeah. You know, my my grandson is not interested, and my son isn't. So, my my wife would go out on the beach occasionally and find stuff, but too much stuff laying around. I gotta gotta let go, man. Hey, George, I, you earlier today you posted um, a, a golden mask uh, detector. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Let's let's do a show about that after you've got some use on that. I that thing looks interesting. The Golden Mass makes some pretty good. Now they're they're um they're uh, oh not digital but uh they're they're um oh it's on the tip of my tongue. They're analog. Yeah, analog and digital. And digital. Oh, together. Together. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, and the Golden Mass. What I told you that's that's the company in Bulgaria that made the Thracian that I have. Okay. You know, made the specification, which is the best relic hunter because it's turn on and go and it's got the greatest two tones. But really? yeah, the gold mine's been around a long time. That machine is about 
uh, seven, eight, nine years old, but I got one. I bought it used, and it turned out it was brand new. And what it has is got a power box underneath that you can't see. Yeah. It's a boost that you push forward, and it, it gives you some crazy depth. Really? And it's got another computer that'll tune it. You know, it'll get away, give make it a clear signal. It, it sort of like gets rid of EMI or whatever, but it's a, it's a monster. Really? It, you just have to interpret the sound. It's got two tones. Uh, high, real high pitch and a very low iron tone, or you can do a single tone or whatever, but it's fun and it is, it is a great machine. It's probably their deepest machine they ever made. I've been wow. looking for one for a while. I found one on eBay. Guy had a bunch of, sold wow. a bunch of cheap and, 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 and gold masks, pirates. This guy had a whole bunch of them on eBay, uh, oh, wow. a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, about $179 new. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. that's cheap. Yeah, we'll talk about it because I'm always looking for a bargain. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like talked about uh, talk about. Uh, and, you know, like we talked about, I'd like to get you on the UK shows. I'll tell you something I'm really kind of interested in right now. Everybody that we've talked to, every guest we've had on the UK show, I think, has used a C scope or still uses a C scope, and oh yeah, I'm very Absolutely. interested in those. I, I find them very fascinating. Yeah, I've used C scope. So I mean, they go back in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, C scope, uh, C scopes, and they made. Uh, they're not deep. They're kind of like an all auto tune type of a detector, uh, okay. but they're good in iron. I use Viking, C scopes, Aredos, uh, you know, quite a few different ones. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I've used tech from all over the world, many, many from over in Europe. C scope oh, yeah. 4S PI was a good PI detector, but it had low volume when you got out on the beach. It worked well, but you couldn't hear anything. Mm. So you did a mod to it. But they're not, they're not, uh, Depth demons, but they seem to work, and you yeah. know they've been around a long time. But they're not the most popular detectors nowadays. You know the the Deus, the the Noctas, yeah. they they kind of, and, the, and of course the Equinox, they kind of taken over the world over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, taken over the world, period. Yeah, what do what do you think about some? You know, like well, I'll I'll just say it. Like, it saddens me to see where Tesoro's at. And I don't remember your 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 thought on Tesoro's. And in some ways, I get it. I know they've fallen behind. You know, they had some three-tone detectors and everything else. Why did they get, you know, that one three-tone, I'm trying to think of what, you know, that, that comes up for sale on eBay, and they're gone, and they go astronomical. Why I don't understand why they got away from their three tone detectors and stuff. Why didn't they well, make a two tone iron and everything else with adjustable iron volume? That that would have been brilliant. Um, well, I, so I understand, but I go ahead. They did, they did make a two tone. It was a uh, the original uh, golden two. Yeah, they had a. What was it called? Yeah, no, 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 no. I understand, but why? Why wasn't any of the two or three tone machines in their lineup anymore? Well, that's where they made a mistake. They should have made a Tehan with that. Yeah, if they, I think if they were going to make any machine, they put that some mode on that Cortez you're talking about. And you'd have to. I mean, the Cortez is a great machine. It's got little eyes. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't see the damn screen for one thing. Uh, uh-huh. But to get the, the tone ID, you had to press some mode. So it was a lot of work. You know, it, they could have taken a Tehan, given it a couple tones, and, man, that would have been a, a super winner. Everybody would have wanted that. It really mm-hmm. So I but get where I, – I mean, I get yeah. where they've fallen behind, but at the same time, um, George, I would still, in moderate soil, I would still take my outlaw – and and I'm not saying I would accomplish it as easy, 
But I think with my outlaw and heavy iron, I could I could hang with about any detector out there. Well, I you mean, know where they made their mistakes? They brought them down. And this was not good business, but this was how it was done years ago with that lifetime warranty. Mm-hmm. You know, on these old detectors, they've been fixing those things for pretty much free the whole time. Mm-hmm. And that had to take a lot of money to do that out of them. I'm a yeah. firm believer that one of the reasons, you know, it, it fell apart. You know, how long yeah. can you fix detectors for free in, in the modern in the modern Right. World? Just in shipping costs back and forth. You know, I'm sure that they probably shipped on their own dime, I would assume, yeah. at least back. They, uh, well, and that's why people buy those old Tesoros, because mm-hmm. well, they could send them in because it didn't matter who owned them. And, you know, if you bought one but before a certain year, you, you, they'd have to fix it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah, crazy I'll for sure. A bunch of, yeah, you like Tesoros. I got three I'll put the box into you. <laughs> I, yeah, I do. I love Tesoros. I they they, they hold mm-hmm. a special place in my heart. I've I've found a lot of good relics and stuff field hunting with them, and I love. Well, I'm gonna, I'll send you these three, and you just keep them and put them in a place somewhere. Oh boy, I'll I'll, I'll put them to use, George. I'm not gonna lie. I still love Tesoros. All right, let's wrap this up. Hey, I want to. I'll get with yeah. you here in the next week or two. I want to talk to you about doing some other shows. Uh, coming on, um, getting with you about doing a, a UK show with us, um, making some arrangements when you have some time off. Cause I, man, I love talking to you and I, uh, really value your knowledge and experience. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And like they say in Virginia, I'm known as the barometer. <laughs> the barometer. Why is that George? They measure what I say. Right. There you go. When it's not, it's not. <laughs> that's awesome all right george i appreciate it we're gonna real quick before before we go um if you get a chance watch gypsy gypsy jewels on facebook girls rock metal detecting that's uh kimmy price um she does our intro great videos on facebook i know they're just ohio but i love ohio relic hunting uh dirt pirates facebook um YouTube, Huntress Kimmy and Claude Hopper Scott throughout the UK. I love watching those guys. Uh, Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine. Check them out online. So, uh, George, again, always a pleasure having you on, buddy, and I appreciate it. All right, Mike. Have a good evening. We'll talk to you soon. You too, buddy. I'll, we'll, t- we'll talk soon. All right, there you go, everybody. We wrapped it up. I don't know about you, but I think George is just a wealth of information. He's a smart, smart guy and um, great with detectors. Gave great information on the ORX. I want one now. Um, uh, need one. Wow, he he, he uh, definitely sold me and uh, absolutely exciting to have George on. Thank you all for tuning in and have a good night.